Pictures of father who dies just after daughter's birth make the world weep. Today's stories are full of painful but beautiful moments. Let's look at the last moments of a father who dies just after the birth of his daughter. The images of their encounter brought the world to tears. Be warned, this video will take you on an emotional roller coaster. Cancer, a disease that has many people in its grip during life and in death. This story is about Brett, a loving husband and father and also a teacher just like Nicole. The two were friends at first, best friends later, and then husband and wife. They started a family and had two daughters, Freya and Ella. The girls loved their father to the moon, and according to Nicola, Brett was amazing with them, loved playing with them, and was a wonderful father. But things took a turn for the worse. Brett was diagnosed with a brain tumor and had to have it removed to have a chance of survival. He had surgery, and the doctors did everything they could to remove it. It was after she was born that she began to notice that Brett was changing. He was afraid to know the cause of it because he knew the tumor could come back. Unfortunately, her suspicions were right. The tumor had returned. The doctor had told them that this time it was more aggressive. Brett was dying. Also, if you have not done so already, please subscribe to our channel and click that notification bell to get inspired by these real-life stories every day. Now, back to the story. The news came at a time when Nicola was pregnant with their third child, Aria. Three months after receiving the terrible news, Nicola went into labor, and although it was to be a beautiful day with the birth of her baby, it was also a very sad day. While Nicola was in labor at Luton Hospital, her husband suffered a stroke at home. The man was transferred to another hospital in Milton Games. Nicola had just had the baby and knew she had to go and see Brett. The prognosis for Brett's condition was not good. Nurses and doctors worked at lightning speed to get Nicola on her way. As soon as she got the all clear from the doctor, she picked up her newborn baby and went to see Brett. When we needed to get Nicola there so that she could say her goodbyes, it was like, it was that serious that he yeah, was, was gonna you know, probably going to die there. The staff at the other hospital also did their part and did everything they could to keep Brett alive long enough for him to meet his daughter. Nicola knew what was about to happen, and at that moment she just wanted her husband to know that she was okay. When Nicola and Aria arrived, she put the baby on Brett. She described what he looked like, held his head in her hand and said, it's okay, don't hurt yourself anymore. He held on long enough to meet her baby. She didn't want him to be subjected to any more pain. They spent about three hours with Brett. Aria was born at 5.07 a.m. on February 11, 2019, while Brett went to heaven at 8.25 a.m. the same day. What a tragic story. The next story also stars a family who have gained a new member and at the same time lost a parent. Imogen For most people, being pregnant is a wonderful time, but sometimes there are things beyond our control. An Australian couple, Aeon and Imogen, were expecting a baby. They were overjoyed because their family was expanding and their son would soon be a big brother. However, when Imogen was 36 weeks pregnant, she was taken to the operating theater and had been admitted to hospital with an ear infection. Doctors discovered that a suspected strain of bacterial meningococcus had reached her brain and caused inflammation. Imogen suffered catastrophic brain damage. Her vital signs declined, and doctors had to operate to save her baby. They performed a cesarean section, naming the baby Eleanor. The baby girl would have to stay in the ICU for a few days, as she had been born prematurely, but it was too late for Imogen. She was dying. When her husband John found out, he took their son JP to say goodbye to his mother. As Imogen lay in the hospital bed, the little boy came up to his mother and kissed her goodbye. It was a heartbreaking moment devastated by the tragedy that struck his family. John took to Facebook and shared the photo of Imogen and JP's last kiss. He wrote, Today has been a very bittersweet day. At 11 past 12, Eleanor Lillian Joy was born by emergency cesarean section. Then sometime after 5 o'clock in the afternoon, my beautiful wife died from a complication of an ear infection. Eleanor is doing very well. She will remain in the NICU for a week or so. She's very pretty. She has Imogen's lips, ears, and hair. I miss my wife very much. John also shared that Image never got to use the suitcase he had packed for the hospital and that at home there were unfinished works for Eleanor. 
With the sudden death of his wife, all his plans had been wiped out and he was left traumatized. He was now a widower and had to look after a child and a newborn baby. Luckily, John and Imogen have great friends and family, one of them being Rennie King, who shared John's story and set up a GoFundMe page to help ease some of the financial hardship. In a short time, people donated more than the target amount because they loved Imogen and were so moved by the tragic outcome. John was astounded by the support he received. With Eleanor at home, he wrote, The words thank you seem inadequate to express how grateful I am, but that is all I can say. My heart goes out to you. I am a strong father. Another father barely kept his composure as he had to watch the most heartbreaking thing his children did. Abby. Any parent can tell you the hardest thing is losing a child. Abby Souter, diagnosed with a diffuse intrinsic glioma in 2016, is a type of brain tumor that affects muscles, nerves, heart rhythm, and breathing. The following year and a half, Abby from Arkansas, USA, underwent 33 rounds of chemotherapy. It is almost unimaginable that a child could undergo such treatment, but the brave girl did. For a while, the treatment helped to stop the tumor, but then it started to grow in size. The parents felt powerless and decided to try an experimental treatment in Mexico that cost them more than $200,000, but their efforts were in vain. The tumor continued to spread and on 3rd June 2012, the family said their last goodbye to their beloved daughter. As a touching tribute to his daughter, Matt wrote on Facebook in which he described in detail the horrible experience of having to watch his son Jack saying goodbye to his sister. A little boy shouldn't have to say goodbye to his playmate, his best friend, his little sister. This is not how it should be, but this is the world we live in. The message was accompanied by a photo of Jackson next to his dying sister. As Andy clung to Jackson's left hand, he stroked her forehead. He would not leave her side as she was his best friend, his beloved sister. But sadly, just hours after the heartbreaking photo was taken, Abby passed away. And although she ultimately lost her life to the devastating disease, Abby was a trooper. She had fought her battle with cancer so bravely. Rest in peace, little one. And now for our last story, which will also bring tears to your eyes. Tony. You may have heard of mad cow disease, but did you know that there is a human version called kreutzfeldt jakob disease? This serious disease is caused by infectious proteins that cause irreversible brain damage. Not many people have contracted this disease. Tony Gibson from Tennessee, USA, noticed in 2017 that her cognitive abilities were off. She started forgetting her way home from work or other simple things. So his wife Danielle labeled all the rooms, but that didn't last long because he forgot how to read. It seemed his memory was impaired. At one point, he went to his neighbor's house to look after their dog when the family didn't have one. She also had difficulty running errands. Four months after his symptoms, his wife decided he needed answers and went for help at Vanderbilt University Medical Center, thinking he had dementia. But tests showed he had kreutzfeldt jakob disease, doctor said he had only a year to live. His body was shutting down and he needed care. He was admitted to a nursing home where he could be cared for. It was hard to watch him deteriorate because Tony was a big and strong guy before his illness. In his last months, Tony suffered a lot. He had difficulty walking, eating, and even speaking. Danielle knew that her beloved husband was about to leave this world, so she did everything she could to comfort him. She sang her favorite hymn, Amazing Grace, to him as he lay in the hospital bed in critical condition. The video is just too heartbreaking. As Danielle sings to Tony, he is seen responding in the only way he still knew how. Three days later, the brave and strong Tony passed away. It was the saddest thing I have ever seen. These stories were emotional. Which story made you cry? Thanks for watching and see you next time. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and consider sharing it with someone who may find it interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you in the next one.